Hello and welcome to La Vida Football. My name is Luis Adriano. I'm a UEFA B licensed coach. Today's video is a video on the 352. We're going to look at ways to play with the 352, both defensively and offensively. For this video, I chose the 4231 for the opponents, which is a formation that I often use, essentially because many teams nowadays use the 4231 to play with. So I believe that if I choose the 4231 for opponents, it would be a little bit more helpful for teams to use the ideas that I'm presenting simply because because many teams are using this formation. But if you would like for me to make this video using a different formation for the opponents, comment that in the comment section below and I will be happy to make another video with a different formation. So in the 352, we have three lines. The back line that is made up of the four, five, and three, three center backs. The midfield line is a five player line. Here we have the two and seven on the outside, the eight, six, and 10 in the center with the six being a center defensive midfielder. And with the 352, we can use different shapes. We can use the six, eight, and 10 being a little bit more compact and close with one another and essentially in one line. Or we can have the number six be a little bit more defensive defensive or clearly more defensive with the 8 and 10 being a little bit more offensive and then the wingers essentially being in a position that helps the team both offensively and defensively. The 2 and the 7 could be in line with the 8 and 10 or they could be in line with the number 6. It really just depends on the opponents, where the ball is and where the best possible position is to receive a ball or to defend an opponent. So having these three players in the center is actually what makes this formation quite special because again we can play with the 8, 6, and 10 in essentially one line. A little bit staggered, of course, but essentially in one line. Or we can have the 8 and 10 push up, and then we have essentially two offensive midfielders. Or we can have two defensive midfielders and then have the number 10 or the number 8 be essentially in front of the triangle there or on top of the triangle. This formation can be adapted to meet the needs of the game or of that particular game. So I like the different variabilities with this formation that can be adapted and can be transformed into a different formation. Continuing with this formation, the two and seven are alone on the outside wings. So that's always something to be aware of. And if the opponents have partnerships on the outside, which most formations that have a backline of four do, then it is important to see what kind of strategies they employ. And if they are exploiting the wings, then essentially we might have to adapt and change the formation so that we better deal with those type of situations so here we're looking at the two formations and how they match up okay so the back line here essentially we have three versus one but not so far out we have the 11 and 7 so then this could essentially be an issue right because here we only have the number six to essentially cope with these two players so at the end when we really take a look at the positioning so this is actually at the end more so a four versus three so we still have a numerical advantage Advantage. So this could be dangerous because our players in this case are in a more man-to-man -man type of defending. If our 2 and 7 are a little too high, then it is a more man-to-man -man situation. Until we have a little bit more help, then we can go back into a zonal defending where we're moving and shifting together. But doing that, for example, leaves this player wide open if the number 7 is not there to help out. Okay. So when that happens and we're in, in a more man-to-man -man situation with the number 6 being that outnumbering help. So if the 11 has the ball then four and six are teaming up to try to defend that if the number nine has the ball then the number six would try to drop and help the number five if the ball's on the other side then the same thing right then it would just be a partnership between the three and the six now let's take a look at the middle so in the middle we have clearly a three versus three so we have the six that can match up with the 10 the 10 and the eight are eight and their six okay so now this again is equal numbers you know this is really good for us uh, to have those options but it is a lot of work for the number six because like I mentioned earlier in order for there to be a numerical advantage on our defensive half the number six would have to recover quickly and if the ball is in the opponent's half then of course the number six will be tried to help the the center so that no balls get put through the center 
so easily and there to support essentially but always with an eye to the three attacking players in the center it's equal numerically it's it's even so you know it's essentially who who is doing their their job better who is defending better who is moving together better and you know who's breaking the lines and how are they breaking the lines let's take a look now at the wings okay so on the wings we have one to one which seems even but unfortunately for the 352 it is not even when the outside attacking midfielders come in to support okay when that happens then we have clearly a two versus one and that's going to be one factor that we need to be careful with with 352 playing against a 4231 and essentially any formation that has partnerships on the outside is how do we deal with that and most importantly what we want is that this player here does not get the ball so easily so how do we do that well of course we add the pressure and our center back needs to come in and put that pressure on in this case the number 11 and then we shift together the game shifts over but when this happens that our number seven recovers to cover this number seven here now this is simple shifting but very important because if that shifting does not happen if our number seven falls asleep then there is a possibility for a long ball if our number four falls asleep then it's an easy pass to the number 11 whether directly or a quick pass to the number eight and then a quick pass out to the number 11 and then it's a one-on-one -on -one here on the outside until our number two recovers so it is very important that our players communicate properly and are essentially turned on when the pass is made so that when the pass is made the movement is already in motion shifting is already in motion and help is coming as well okay so all this is important so that this numerical disadvantage on the wings is not too crucial for the game okay so it's going to be very demanding with this formation it is going to be important to have players that can meet those demands so the two and seven of course are going to be running up and down the pitch helping both on the defensive side and on the offensive side so it is going to be important to have players that can meet those demands and on top of that having substitutes that can step in for these two players when there is no more gas left in the tank okay so on the top we have two versus two in the back we have the two center backs with our two forwards so this on its face appears like it's numerically even but having two pivots in the 4231 either number eight or the number six can step in at any point and create a numerical disadvantage and making it easy for opponents to essentially play out beating us in this situation here okay and then on top of that the number six could even drop in between allowing the four and five to open up essentially making us decide whether we want to cover the outside allow a pass to the number 10 or the number eight in the center or steer the game to one side where opponents are available either way so the 352 does have a numerical disadvantage with our forwards when we play against a 4231 because of the two pivots so that is just something to be aware of and to consider when we defend because then it's probably going to be better for us to defend using a different formation if we try to employ a, a high press but we will get into that now now let's take a look at how we will defend using the 352 in a high press okay so now let's take a look at a high press with a 352 so as you can see here we have our formation set up and in a high press we try to win the ball in the final third so that is essentially here where the two and seven are now and and further up the pitch okay but the 352 is not necessarily a good formation to run a high press with simply because of the open space behind the number two and the number seven if i were the red team in this situation i would essentially have my 7 and 11 to extend out to the sidelines forcing the number 7 to either go up or go down but a team would most likely want the players to stay back i know i would i wouldn't want my players to put pressure on the 2 and 3 in this situation and then have a direct ball to the number 7 then that would leave our back line exposed leaving our number 3 to go on a one-on-one -on -one with a winger and that is not the duel that we that we want if it's a duel between the 7 and the 3 i would prefer that it's a aerial ball from the number four for example and then there we have a better chance at winning that first ball okay but in a 
1v1 situation where the number seven has the ball on their feet, space behind the number three. Yeah, th this is just not what we want, okay? So the 352, a little dangerous to high press with. We can be a little bit ambitious and push up the two and the seven up high so that we have a three, three, four, but we are in the same situation, right? Because this will leave the number seven and number 11 open for a direct ball to the outside. But we can have our number four and number three extend out, leaving our number five to fend for themselves against the number nine. But because of that situation, we drop our number six a little bit deeper and then have our eight and 10 play in a numerical disadvantage in the center. But because of that, we essentially try to steer the game to one side, right? So then allowing that first pass to, to come out to the number four. But when this happens, then our tactic here is going to be to drop our number two back to the second line and then adding full pressure on top okay so the number 11 will essentially cover the pass back to the goalkeeper and the number five the number nine will cover any pass into the center and then our number seven will be in position to help the number nine but also to cover the number three should the number three get the ball so this three three four essentially becomes a four three three defensively during a high press which gives us a better balance and that is one way to run a high press with this formation of course it is still very dangerous because you still have a one-on-one -on -one situation on the wings but if it's a ball that comes directly from the goalie then it's an aerial ball most likely where our number four and number three should have some sort of advantage there especially because they are behind the player looking forward and looking straight at the ball whereas the number 11 has to backpedal look up and then play it back right because playing it forward in this situation would be difficult unless the ball is missed by the number four then it's essentially a foot race towards the goal so then if we are going to defend with a 352 high press we're going to change that into a 334 adding a lot of pressure but being lenient on that first pass so that when we have that first pass occur we add the pressure we drop back one of our wing backs so that they defend and help in the center and after that it is essentially adding the pressure to try to win the ball back in the final third okay that is running a high press i like to run a 343 three during a high press when I play with a back line of three simply because of the balance and if you have seen my other videos then you know that that is the formation that I like to run with the high press simply because we have three players attacking up top and these three players can remain on top and then we have a good distribution in the center we have four players right two in the center against a four two three one of course you have a numerical disadvantage in the center if let's say for example here the number 10 pushes up then we have the numerical disadvantage here six 6, 8, and 10 versus R6 and R8 because our number 10 is pressing up high. But again, that pressure that these three players can put on the opponent can essentially help us recover the ball without having to deal with this numerical disadvantage in the middle okay so we force the ball out to the outside and then put pressure with all the players that are surrounding okay here for example when the number three has the ball then we have two players there to put pressure on number three to step out if there is a pass intended to one of the center defensive midfielders then we essentially add that pressure there we cover the pass back and then our number nine will cover this lane here to the number six which would essentially allow one of two passes either the number Number eight or the number two but the more dangerous option right now would be the number eight right if we pull out too much there then the number five can pass the ball to the number eight and essentially quick turn and pass to the number 11 is deadly for us so we don't want that to happen so we have our number two essentially tuck in a little bit force a pass out but as this is happening of course we are shifting already right we don't want to fall back on our shifting there because should the number two not get enough pressure then the ball still gets to the number 11 and still Still creates problems for us so everything has to be done quickly after this shifting in the middle as well the numerical disadvantage shouldn't be too much of a problem once the ball is there because the number 10 would be dropping back as well and number 11 would then be adding pressure from behind number nine will be covering the center and our number seven would be shifting over as well okay so there is a lot of shifting and moving and in this variation so the three four three in a high press will essentially lead back to a three five two so three players there we have four players here in a 
chain essentially and then the number 10 working their way back to get in between the six and the eight or essentially covering behind the number eight to the number 10. But what's important here is that we keep a chain together, shifting together, and then having that line of four become a line of five once the number 10 or whoever is the player that steps in between the 11 and nine drop back to the position to create that middle line of five. So a lot of pressure, a lot of moving, a lot of shifting. Very important when doing a high press. 